Please welcome back Andrew Haig. <laughs> Um, and we also have um, Andrew's longtime collaborator, his editor, Jonathan Alberts, is with us, too. I hope Thank you're you. okay. Congratulations. Thank you for this beautiful film. I'm glad you could be here. No, it's great to be here. It's strange standing up there, but it feels quite nice. <laughs> Well, I think they liked it, so. <laughs> um, can I just ask you to start by talking about the source material? I'm not sure you know, what you discovered, because there was a book, there was also a film based on it. Um, yeah, what, how did it come to you? Yeah, the, the book got sent to me by Blueprint, the producers, um, and they asked if I'd be interested in reading it, and I, had, and I read it, and whenever I approach a project, especially if it's an adaptation, I read it once, let it sit, see how it kind of percolates. Um, and it was just the kind of the central idea of that novel. And if anyone's read the novel, the film is quite different, I guess. But the central conceit is the same about these parents sort of uh, being, you know, the, the main character revisiting his parents and his past. And that just really struck me, I think, as a way to deal with parental love, to deal with pain, to deal with trauma of all sorts and all kinds. Um, and then it was about trying to make that more personal to me, I think. Um, so it was, a, it was a long process of kind of adaptation. And then I saw the movie that a uh, long time after, actually, um, which is interesting. It's, it's very different. different. Yeah, very different movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that film sort of plays up the supernatural elements in a different way. And I'm, so I'm just curious if you could talk about, like, it's a film that, you know, obviously is not fully in contact with reality necessarily. But you know, I'm curious about how you decided on the register, uh, how you wanted to play this um, reality versus the opposite. Yeah. I mean, it kind of it was a long process and a varied kind of process of trying to work out how much they would feel like ghosts in any traditional sense, um, or how they would uh, feel more of a representation of his subconscious or his longing or his need. Um, and I think with Jonathan the same as we were editing it, it was always about the reality of the story, if you want to call it that, about who they are and why they have appeared. It was a lot less interesting, I think, to either of us than just what the film is trying to express. And in many ways, it feels like it's the film is my subconscious <laughs> being told through uh, these characters. Um, and so the kind of sort of the, re the, the supernatural element sort of just became less and less important, I think, the more that I worked on the project. Jonathan, do you want to talk a little bit about how you discuss the process of, of editing with Andrew? Sure. So I think the first time I read the script, uh, I think we were both in Los Angeles, and Andrew came to my place, and I'd read the script the night before. And uh, when, I, when he arrived, you know, we, we started talking about it, but I just said, oh, I can't believe you wrote a film about, like, for me, about me. Because it was <laughs> such, like, it, it had such a niche kind of thing, but also a universal thing. And um, Andrew and I are usually talking about scripts when we're cutting something. So he's tapping away on his keyboard in the background while I'm cutting something. And it's kind of been that experience where he's like, oh, I'm writing something very personal. And then, you know, several months later, I'll actually, you know, uh, read the script. But the tonal elements, we talked a lot in that first meeting and talking about music and sound design and talking about how to use all of those elements. And what Andrew did say was like, I just know I want this to be different and I want it to feel different. So a lot of the editorial process was about trying to understand that and try to figure it out because it was it's complicated. Yeah. I think the other tonal element that's striking for me about the film is, is not so much this reality versus the otherworldly, but the film's absolute sincerity. Mm. And I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about that because that seems like a very difficult thing to achieve. Um, I mean, the for me, the measure of the film's success is that it can end with him delivering those lines, the opening lines of the Frankie Goes to Hollywood song, and have it seem not remotely absurd, but completely devastating. Yeah. I mean, look, I was worried from the very beginning about how absurd so much of it could be. Um, the very basic concept of seeing your parents again, and they're younger than you. Um, and at every stage, I was like, I don't is this going to be able to work? And it did make me nervous, but I just felt like the, 
I just kept believing that it would work, I suppose. And the sincerity is, is important to it because I think, especially so much of the music and the pop songs, pop songs are so sincere and they allow us to express emotions that we actually can't often express. And I think especially for like queer kids, music can be really, really important and has been obviously to, to the queer community. So I wanted that to be part of it. And so it, for me, it made total sense at the end of the film that they, he would imagine that he was playing that song. It made sense to me. Um, and so I just tried to ignore those little niggles in my head being going like, this is not gonna work. And just <laughs> hope that it did. Was that a question you wrestled with, John? Well, yeah, because Andrew and I were talking about it constantly, you know, and I think, <laughs> Andrew, is this going to work? Is this going to work? And I think, you know, we spent quite a long time editing it, and I think during that time we were just basically, we just have to be honest and we have to be true and we have to actually follow it. So I think for us it was always a question, but you kind of just have to, I mean, you have to just commit yourself to it, and I think that's what we were trying to do. So. But it was, yes, it was a constant conversation. <laughs> yeah, and I think it was just about making sure that we we managed the emotion of the piece as we went through. And I wanted it to be emotional. You know, I know when I was writing it, it made me very emotional. I remember seeing Jonathan when he was doing some of the early kind of during the shoot, and I'd come in and he was crying his eyes out as he was editing, and there's tissues everywhere. Um, not that wasn't during the sex scene. That was, no. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, sorry. Um, so, uh, I knew that that kind of emotional power, uh, sorry, that's really ruined everything there, but um, uh, I wanted that emotional power to be important, and so I wanted to make sure that was there. Can I just come back to something you said in your introduction that you said this is your most personal film? It's based on a book, so can you talk about how you... Yeah, I know, it is, it's strange, because I, I t when I took the book, it was like, okay, you know, how the main character was going back into his past in order to deal with pain and, and any kind of trauma and all the kind of things that he's dealing with, I wanted to do the same thing as a writer myself. And so, you know, I think anybody that knows me will know that it's pretty personal. I mean, for example, I shot the film in my old childhood home. So the house, the parents so the house was my or, old house, and I hadn't been back there for 45 years or something. Or no, 40 this is years. just outside London? Just outside London. It was where I grew up when I was a kid, and that was the ha first house we lived in. Um, and when I wrote the script, I had that house in mind, and then I went back there, and we knocked on the door, and they said, yeah, okay, you can film here. Um, <laughs> so it was a very emotional, strange experience, shooting scenes in my old parents' bedroom with these actors, and, you know... I felt like I'd become a child again. I got eczema, which I hadn't had since I was a child, and it all started coming up behind my legs and behind my arms. Um, and so I think, and you know, a lot of the things that they talk about are things that are my stories, I suppose, and about being gay and growing up gay, and all of that feels very personal to me. Um, I feel like I, we have to address um, Andrew and Paul. Obviously, they're not here because of reasons beyond our control. Um, but uh, I was wondering if you can talk about casting. I'd like to hear you talk about all four, all four actors, but um, specifically the two of them. Um, at what stage? Who came first? Um, Andrew came first, and that was always, I always, whenever I cast, I have to get that, the lead protagonist first. I can't think about other people until that's done. Um, and Andrew I'd liked for a long time, and I felt like this was a you know, kind of perfect role for him. Um, and it, it was, I, I'm not one of those people that, that say you have to be queer to play queer roles, but it was important for me in this case, because there was so much nuance that I was trying to get to, I didn't want to have to have endless conversations with somebody to try and understand it. So that was an important part of it. Then the parents came next, and I wanted, it was a, it was a strange dual thing that I was doing. I wanted them to make sense as Andrew's parents, but I also wanted them to make sense as my parents. <laughs> So I was trying to find people that made sense of both things, which um, wasn't always easy. Uh, but, you know, the mom is a bit like my mom, and the dad is a bit like my dad, and they also, I feel, really make sense as Andrew's parents, they make sense. And then Paul was the last one to come on board, and um, uh, he came very late in the day, and we hadn't actually gone to Paul first initially. I kind of thought he wouldn't do it, I think, is the truth. And then I heard he'd read it and was really interested, and I met him, and, you know, I thought, I mean, he's, he's, he's brilliant, I think, so it was perfect casting. Um, 
and you know we'd worked a lot on getting their chemistry you know to feel real and authentic and I feel like it I feel like it does well since you brought up the sex scenes <laughs> did you can you talk a little bit I mean I'm also thinking of course of the film of that you know many of us know you for weekend as well which is also a film that has very intimate and very natural um, relatively non awkward yeah. as sex scenes go <laughs> like I'm just wondering if you can talk a bit about how you conceive them for this film yeah I knew they were slightly different from the sex scenes I've done before and we actually I spoke a lot with the actors about how we wanted it to feel and um, and sex scenes are so I mean they're so awkward to to, to feel to, to feel to um, to shoot but it's just I know I want it to feel real and tender and delicate and a bit sexy and a bit all of those things and a bit dirty sometimes and all of those things that sex is and um you know we had an intimacy coordinator which i'd never used before um which was its own thing um and but you know say more <laughs> <laughs> i'm all for them i think i understand why they exist i think they were a great thing it's a slightly strange experience when there's now four of you talking about the scenes when before it was just three of you talking about the scenes, but I, I completely understand why they exist. So I think I think it's it's good, um, but you know they're, they're important scenes in the in the in the story, and you know I've shot quite a lot of sex scenes, and they have to just feel like they have story relevance, otherwise there's no point. And you know I think we we spent. I mean I feel like they were the, you the assembly. They're pretty close to what they were actually. Those scenes usually come together quite easily, I think, in the end. Um, and you know, I'm pleased with them. I think they feel like they feel like they should. Jonathan, you want to? Um, it was interesting, you know, because I think Andrews has a real ability for directing actors in you know that situation and in in the entire film. And it's it's an, always an interesting thing to witness. And in the editing room, there's so many possibilities when you have such great actors and you have such nuance in performance. I mean, you don't just have you know, you have a, a wealth of, of material and good material. And I think it's just, you know, basically kudos to Andrew to be able to kind of find this naturalistic feel with it. And, you know, I feel quite lucky to be, you know, to have that material to work with. And I should just want to know, you, the two of you have been working together since... Since 45 years. years. Jonathan, well, I met Jonathan when I was doing uh, Looking, a uh, yep. show on HBO, and <laughs> some of them were in the audience tonight, I think, actually, some of the actors. Uh, and I met Jonathan on that, and then Jonathan's done everything everything I've done since. Great. Um, I think we have are getting the signal that it's almost uh, time to, to wrap up. Yes, we do actually have to wrap it up, I'm afraid. Um, but I want to thank Jonathan and Andrew for being here. Jonathan is actually participating in a panel um, on the craft of editing uh, on Wednesday? I th tu sorry, Tuesday. Tuesday night. Tuesday night. 6.30. Um, <laughs> Jonathan will be uh, in conversation with um, Sandra Adair, who edited Rick Linklater's Hitman. So, um, and uh, I want to thank Andrew for this extraordinary film. Thanks for being here. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you.